Hey you all, thank you so much for checking out this week's video. Pardon the noise in the back. You'll probably hear my kids go a bit crazy in today's video, but uh, today I have eight to 10 tips for parents or caregivers of children with visual impairments. I've had several, uh, the last week or so, I've had several parents reach out to me with their questions and concerns or just introduce themselves saying, hey, I'm a sighted parent, but I have a child diagnosed with a visual impairment. So this week's video is for you guys. I hope you, you find it helpful. If you have any further questions or comments, you are welcome to put it in the comment section below or reach out to me privately on Instagram or Facebook. Oh, one more thing guys, if you yourself are blind or visually impaired, I welcome and value your all's input uh, and guidance as well. Uh, so if you have anything to add, please put it in the comment section below and, and let's try to give these parents as much uh, support as we can. All right guys, so this is a really crazy day to try to be recording. My kids are going nuts, but while my hubby is taking them for a few minutes, I'm gonna just go through this list really quick. That way you can see what jumps out at you or which ones you're not quite interested in or, or just doesn't apply. And then at the end of the list, I will switch over and we will go more in depth and I'll kind of give you more explanation. So. When parents first begin this journey, they're so anxious and you guys are so concerned and scared and I get it because these are our babies, right? We want the best in life for them and this can be very scary stuff. So number one is keep in mind they are going to be okay. It's not a life devastating diagnosis here to have a visual impairment. They're still just as capable of being successful, productive, and live happy, uh, full lives. Number two, I would say try to be patient and compassionate even at the hardest times. Number three is acceptance. Uh, it, it is in the big picture, I think, extremely difficult. Everyone's journey with acceptance is different. So I actually have a whole video on this where I'm a lot more articulate than I am now. I will put that in the card above as well as in the description box. Number four, when your kiddos are around, no matter what age, but especially the little ones, be mindful of what feelings you're expressing and statements you are making regarding their visual impairment. Number five is on the flip side, you as the parent want to make sure you're in tune with their reactions, their responses, how they're doing and feeling around new uh, situations or new environments or different milestones in life. You want to make sure that you know, you're aware with where their head is at. Number six, I think we're on. Sorry, my kids are going crazy in the back. Number six, I think it's do your due diligence. You know, you want to make sure you research all your resources, all your support systems, all the services that could be at the community level, the state level, as well as online and social media. Number seven, don't procrastinate when it comes to introducing them to skills, adaptations, uh, techniques, uh, technology, all of that. You know, it's it, it, it's never too early to go ahead, put some of those pl in place mm -hmm. and introduce those to them. Even if they haven't reached the legal blindness uh, status yet, it's still important to go ahead, introduce these concepts to them. It will serve them better in the long run. My next tip is on communication, guys. Mm, communication, you want to encourage it to be as open as you can between you and your child, as well as educators and any medical uh, experts. So let's dive in a little bit deeper now. Number one, keep in mind they're gonna be okay. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're still gonna have a full, beautiful life. I think many of us who are blind and visually impaired who have been so for a good chunk of time, we have learned to adapt, 
we have learned what preferences work for us and how to function and things like that and our low vision it just becomes the norm for us you know once we've gotten to the point where we've accepted it and it just is what it is for me personally I don't brood over what I don't have I it just it is what it is it's my norm and I'm used to functioning this way so trust me they will be okay there's light at the end of the tunnel they this isn't gonna be what holds them back in life number two I believe I said was try to be patient and compassionate these two I think can be pretty complex and the most difficult to have when other emotions are running strong. For example, if you're frustrated, they're frustrated, if there's difficult behaviors going on and you're at your wit's end. <laughs> Let's be real. Parenting can be very demanding, right? And if you put a disability such as a visual impairment on top of this, there are gonna be times that they're gonna to come to you with, with requests and needs and wants at the most inconvenient, stressful times, and you'll have to dig down pretty deep for some patience and compassion more than your other parents around you. For example, when I turned 16, all my friends were getting their license, they were finding their independence and running around and I wanted to do that too, but I couldn't. I couldn't drive. My parents, they worked full time. They had a full plate, you know, they tons of responsibilities, other priorities and things, but they did their best to put those aside and give me as many extra transportation uh, rides and things. Uh, they did their best meeting those needs and waiting on me. I don't know how many times, how long they spent waiting in cars <laughs> on me and looking back that was a huge ask never once did they express the inconvenience never once did i feel guilty for needing that extra transportation to maintain a healthy social life moving on number three was acceptance again i this is difficult guys and it's different for everyone it is an individual journey and i, I again i say that in this other video that i'll link again uh, and put in the description box but this can be extremely difficult during the teenage times uh, when they're doing a lot of soul searching and trying to find their place especially with low vision one uh, thing that can help with acceptance though guys during some of these rough rocky years is making sure that you are giving them ample opportunities to develop healthy friendships with other blind and visually impaired people they don't have to necessarily be their exact age or have their exact diagnosis or anything like that for example you know check into your state school for the blind or any kind of community programs with other people who are blind or visually impaired because this can really help go a long way with acceptance they see others that are like them that they can relate to and can help them through some of those struggles that you know can make them feel very isolated if they are in a public school setting or at home and there's no one else visually impaired uh, in the home that's just based on my personal experience um, growing up as the only visually impaired person i knew until i was in high school number four this one was uh, be mindful of how you express your feelings and any statements you may make. I think the younger the kids are, the more impressionable they are. They, they take their cue from us. And especially when it comes to things like this that they may not fully comprehend, they're not sure how they should react or respond. And so they're taking you know, their cue from you and they're gonna look to see what you're doing and responding and they're gonna view that as valid, appropriate responses for them. However, that being said, our adult reactions and emotional responses may not be the best for a child. <laughs> they need to find their, come to their own conclusions, if you will. Uh, so when it comes to emotions, you know, if you're extra tearful, if you're extra anxious, worried all the time, those are completely appropriate for us, but not necessarily for 
them. You know, they have a complete different journey that they are going to be going on and you don't want to transfer that onto them. My parents, they were great at this. You know, my mom, she did her best at just being there for me where I was at. There was one time I snuck up on her. She didn't realize I was watching and she was crying. She was bawling. She was heartbroken. I'm going to get tearful just thinking about it. Um, and she was heartbroken, you know, with the news and what this meant for me and my future. And that really made me feel terrible. I think kids can either internalize it as if it's something they've done wrong or something that's their fault that is making their parents feel that way. Or this is how I took it. Oh, this is something extremely serious. I need to be fearful of this now because it's so big of a deal. It's making my mom, you know, cry. Regarding statements, Guys, uh, you know, this can too influence them in a negative way. And you may not mean it that way, but that's how it can come across. So if you make statements out of a place of fear or pity or remorse or anything like that, or if you yourself uh, don't have a very clear or good perspective on disabilities, uh, side note, I recommend researching the social model of disability. It will really kind of help put a healthy framework on your view of disability and any future discussions on disability. I think all of us who are blind or visually impaired have been apologized to or, you know, people come to us with so much remorse and fear or pity. I think we're to the fifth one, which was uh, be in tune with them. So you want to monitor, are they feeling anxious in a new environment? Are they feeling overstimulated in a new situation or in a crowded room kind of thing? I remember when I was a kid, I would be exposed in the sun. I'd love to play outside all the time and I did not wear sunglasses when I should have. And I had a lot of eye fatigue and I didn't recognize that that's what it was at the time. So make sure that you are being in tune and knowing how much sun exposure there, or if, or on the flip side, if there's not enough light uh, for them. These are things that you want to make sure that you are monitoring and, and how they are adapting and accommodating for, you know, different situations, environments, how they're coping, all of that stuff, because they may not have the communication skills to let you know, hey, I'm feeling anxious, hey, I'm feeling overwhelmed or overstimulated, or hey, I'm getting a headache and I think it's because I've been in the sun too long. It takes a long time for us to get that self-awareness, especially when we are distracted by so much other stimuli. And so you as the parent, you'll need to make sure that that is on your radar especially um, for the little ones until they're old enough to develop that self-awareness on their own. Number seven, I think this one had to do with resources, services, things like that. So this could be, you know, at your neighborhood, church, community level, anyone um, who has any groups that are for the blind or visually impaired. You could have uh, disability resource centers, that kind of thing, uh, specifically for visual impairments. I used to work at VIPS in Louisville, Kentucky. That's visually impaired preschool services. So all the way at the preschool level. Um, you know, most states have a state school for the blind. Check into that. They usually have summer programs and different things like that if they're not anywhere located near you. You can do some other short course type of things. Um, that way they're still being introduced to other students uh, at the School for the Blind. There's disability resource centers, rehab centers, there's all kinds of uh, places like that where you can get services. At the school level, make sure you're highly involved with IEPs and all of that stuff, making sure they get assessed, that you are being introduced to all the different visual aids, technologies, all of that stuff. Uh, that can be done through the schools. I'm trying to think regarding social media and things like that, another great resource, guys, because there are tons 
of Facebook groups out there um, for parents and for those diagnosed. So, you know, if your teenager is just kind of reaching this point and they have a Facebook account, you can encourage them to to search for different Facebook groups that they can reach out and just post their questions, their comments, find other people that they can relate to that way. And that goes across all social media platforms. So just know that that is a great resource to find other people that they can relate to and you as a parent as well. Moving on, communication. So this one guys, you wanna make sure that you do your best to keep those lines of communication open because you want them to come to you anytime they have a need, a request, um, if they're struggling with anything, that kind of thing. There's going to be a lot of rough patches, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There's times when you go through all the natural grief and loss stages. You know, you're you're lost. You're um, grieving, you're angry, they want to know why them. All of that stuff is completely natural and normal and we all go through it. So no, you want to make sure that you're there for them to, and they can come to you um, and communicate anything that they need to. Uh, this also goes with educators. You want to make sure you're staying in tune and anything that they're doing in the school, you want to make sure that you are also reinforcing at home in any way that you can. And make sure that you're also staying on top of any medical uh, research, any advances by speaking to your medical doctor, expert, and you know whoever you are, physician you are seeing. Uh, because there's advancements every year, guys. A lot's going on uh, in the visual um, eye treatment world, a lot with gene therapy, stem cell stuff, all that jazz. So make sure you keep those lines of communication open. Beware, you don't wanna shame them if there's anything they can't do or struggle doing. Um, it, you know, like I say, it's, I'm not gonna lie, there's years of struggles. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. It's difficult, but there's light at the end of the tunnel, guys. I promise you will get there. They will get there and everyone will be okay in the end. Even in the darkest times, guys, when it feels like they are defeated and you don't know what to do, I, I promise they'll find their way. Eventually they will get there. It just takes time. Um, to find that acceptance, to find what works for them, and yeah. So hopefully, guys, this helps. I, I, if so, give it a thumbs up and let me know. Otherwise, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to put your comments down below, and I will catch you next time.